Mario's Motion Chase. This is part two. I'm going to show you how to do the block coding. First thing you need to do is create a couple variables. So the first variable we'll actually create is time. And we'll set that to the value of 20. And then we'll need one more variable. We can just do that easily by duplicating. And we'll make score. And we'll start score off at zero. Buttons. So we'll start off actually, I guess we'll start off with another button here. And we got to get the initial Y value. Um, we can do that by just actually just pulling out. Um, we're going to set Mario's. We're not going to set the X. We're going to set the Y. So we got to click in there. And then we got to get a math block. And pull it in here. So we're going to take whatever the current Y is. And because we want to go up, it's actually going to be a subtraction. So let me actually get the current Y. So it'll be under motion on the canvas box. So I'll click here and then, oh, this doesn't look quite right. So let me get this right here. So we need Mario's Y. And I'll put it in here. Um, we'll subtract 10. So remember in the thunkable canvas, what happens is 0, 0 is in the upper left. And then if you want to go right, the X value goes up. And if you want to go down, actually the Y value increases, which is sort of counterintuitive. So if you want to go up, back towards 0, 0, you have to subtract. So that's how we set up the up button. Now let's set up the down button here. We'll just have to make sure it adds 10. And then we can do the right and left just by duplicating and doing some other little things here. So we'll check, change the X value. And the X value, if we want to go, oh, we'll to check, change that. We'll make this the right button. So every time we go right, we'll add 10. And every time we go left, oh, let's get this going. We'll go left and then we'll subtract. Okay, we got the button set up. Um, we're going to need a procedure here, uh, and we want a grow procedure for whenever Mario runs into or eventually gets to the mushroom. So let's set up a procedure where you run our functions. It says do something. So we're going to call this procedure grow. Make sure it grows. And we want to change the look. So let's see here. Let's look at looks and we want to set Mario's height to, we want to add 10 to whatever it is. So if you go, so, okay, we got that. And then we want to add 10 to it. So we'll have to go back to math. And we'll take whatever the current height is and we'll add 10 to it. So under looks, get Mario's height. And we'll add 10. And then we also want his width, so we can just we can just duplicate this, pop it in. And so we'll go width and the width, and that will also go up by 10. Okay, so now we've got our procedure set up. We got one last thing we need to do is when Mario actually runs into or collides with the mushroom. So let's see here. At events. So when Mario sprite collides with the mushroom sprite. We should change the score. So we can go into the variables and we'll change the score variable by one. And we want the text to also change. So do we have a score label here? Here it is. So I'll grab the score label text and we will set that to actually we're gonna join some things. We'll need a text block up here. And we're gonna pop that in and we'll actually change, we'll have it say, make sure it says score, and we'll just add app score under there. Ooh, looks like there's a couple variables. Let's make sure we have the right one. I don't know why there's a couple variables here, but anyway, so we'll make sure this is the right one. A little glitch in the glitch in the matrix there. Okay, and we want to play a sound. So I think it's sound one we want to play. That's the getting bigger. So we'll call sound one to play. And then we could put the function that we just created in there, but I think it'd just be easier to put it under just so visually you can see. Okay, we got all the things set up for the basic version. Okay, we're going to add one more element to the basic app here. We need a function that will allow the mushroom to move to a random spot after it's uh, touched by Mario. So we got to pull out another function block. We'll rename it move random. And this time we're going to pull out the motion blocks for it says Mario, but we'll switch it over to um, the mushroom. 
and we'll set the x to a random number, random integer from 1 to say 300. And then we got to do that for the y, so the x and y should move to random locations, same one. And then we finally have to add the move random block down here. The very last thing I want to show you guys is how to code the start button. So we start out with the start button dot clicked event. And we want to make sure that when we press start, it's like a almost like a reset. So we'll also make sure that our variables are set to their original amount. So score should be zero. Let me get that set up. And I'm gonna make sure the score label is is equal the text is equal to the value of the variable That's right here. and then we can just copy this do the same for time so time should start at 20 and the time label let's be set to the time variable and voila we are done with the start button